Very good evening to all. Just wait for another two to three minutes once I get the green signal from the host side, we will start. Okay. I hope I am uh, audible to all of you. Please let me know if I am audible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, can we start, Madam, uh, Madam, Sir, whoever is present uh, over there, yes, sir, we can start. Okay, right, okay, that's it, right, okay, so here we go. Good evening to all respected teachers, principals, vice principals, and all of you the learned people right over there who are today's present in this particular platform. I, Mr. Shurujit Sen, Principal, Jharkhand Public School, Dhanbad, Resource Person of CBSC. Once again, welcome you to yet another fantastic one-hour discussion on school culture. Well, respected teachers, you know, it's a very common, it's a very, it's a very common phenomenon. It's a very common thinking among parents. Whenever they admit their children in whichever school they want, whether it is, uh, excuse me, whether it is a, whether it is in the junior school, pre-primary school, middle school, high school, even in the, uh, even uh, in the higher education sector, engineering, medical, and plenty of others. The first question that comes into the mind of the parents is, what is the culture of that area? What is the culture of that area? After that, you know, the results, the infrastructure, uh, and other things come into it. First is the culture. What is the culture of this school? Somebody is laughing. It's a fact, madam. Sony, madam. It's a fact. People first think about the culture. What type of teachers are over there? They are not, first initially, it's, they are not concerned about whether the teachers are learned or trained or whether they are cultured people out there. Or not. This is the first question that arises. And respected teachers, if you see, if you, if you have gone through NCF, school education, which is an integrated part of the foundation stage as well as the school education, one of the crucial chapters, one of the crucial chapters of this NCF school education is on school culture, exclusively on school culture. Because it is said that the school culture, you know, the school culture is directly, the happening of the school culture is directly linked with the teaching learning process. Children develop a great mindset if they are placed in a very cultured place. If culture is not something that is only related to the school, everywhere, wherever we go, whatever we do, we always think about the culture. How is the culture of the place where I will have my new house? Or what is the culture of that particular hotel where I will be staying for three, four days? Or what is the culture of that particular uh, spot where we are going for a picnic or a tour? So always this word culture, culture, culture of it. Now, it is like, you know, it's like directly linked with our own thinking, with our own safety, with, with our own way of growing, developing. That's why in school, culture is very important. You may have noticed, respected teachers, with your good experience of being associated with the education world for such a long period of time, there are certain schools which may not be in such high-five branded schools. They may not produce every year a huge number of 90 percenters and with a good number of doctors and engineers and this and that and what not. But at the same time, these schools are surviving. They are doing pretty well. 
because these schools have great culture. These schools have developed great culture. Parents feel safe and secured when they send their children to these schools. It's not that, that the other schools don't have culture. I don't want to mean that. Please don't misunderstand me. All the schools have culture. But it's it's always a praise among parents. No, that first, the children, they will always take, send their children to their branded schools. That that's And everybody has the right to do so. But at the same time, there are certain... Uh, budget schools like say for example my school it's not a very it's not a big branded school but definitely definitely somewhere down the line we have developed such a culture that parents do take us seriously also and that is with many many schools across the uh, across our country so let us let us dive deep into the world of school culture and find out what are the things which are necessary to develop a school culture to develop something unique within the schools so that parents will flock into those schools and are will be always in an eager to admit their children and we teachers principals vice principal, whoever are there we just want to see those days those you know, those, those special days before the admission takes place that a long queue of people are standing and they're ready to take an application form to admit their children in the school that is a big dream that we all have that in front of my uh, counter there should be a long line of people standing to take the application forms okay so we'll move a little so now this, this school culture what is it how do we measure it how do we improve it a lot of questions are coming okay what is it how do we measure how can you say that this is a cultured place huh? a building may, a school may have a unique infrastructure superb building Unbelievable, unbelievable quality of teachers, unbelievable. I mean, one can never even expect. But at the same time, it may not have, it may not have that throbbing heart within itself, which can be considered as something called culture. So culture in many ways, it is like, what is the education we are giving? What knowledge children are getting? What type of responsibility the teachers have? How there is an integrated relationship between one and another? These are some of the vital points that are needed to be discussed in order to have a good cultured school. Priya Kumari, madam, thank you so much. But why thumbs down, madam? Am I saying am I saying something wrong? Uh, Priya Kumari, madam, gave a thumbs down, madam. Am I saying something wrong? Again, she is giving a thumbs down. Why, Priya, madam? Why thumbs down? Am I saying something wrong? If it is, then let me know. Okay, you have every right to do so. Okay, let's move a little forward. Okay. Uh, from this picture, you can see a lot of things. Now, look at this picture. All of you, please look at this picture. Now, if you see this picture, if you want, you can take a, you can take a screenshot of it and you can keep it in your school also. We have faces. We have different types of faces over here. Sony Kumari Madam is also giving a thumbs down. Are you not able to hear me, Priya Ma'am? Are you not able to hear me? Oh, now she's clapping. Oh. Right. So if you see this particular picture, you'll see diff different faces are there with different skin tones. And if you look deeply, you will find this, this is a unique picture. This is a unique photograph, I'll tell you. Each and every face over here is different. Each and every face over here, if you see the folds on the faces, they are they seem to be made from paper. Now see the quality of that artist. See the, the how meticulously this artist has prepared this particular photo or this particular collage or whatever you want to call it. And each and every, each and every face has a different, different contours. Each and every face have different contours, different folds. It depicts that the entire that we all are different. In our thinking, in our in our way of living, somewhere down the line, we link with each other to have a good, proper culture. All of them are looking at a particular direction. Okay, there may be different skin tones, there may be different religions, there may be different way of thinking, and those folds so different, different folds so different types of people. But somewhere down the line, we all are joined together. We all are joined together, and. We all are joined together and we live together and we follow certain culture. Okay, let's go a little forward. And now I will just, we'll have a small story about a particular bank, you know. We'll, we'll go through a particular story of a particular bank, a very small story. 
Manish Kumar, good, good evening. Yes, definitely, very good evening. The recent investigations, it was done in September 2022 into the bank procedures of a bank called Wells Fargo. It is supposed to be one of the most valuable bank in the world. Uh, they have used the term culture of the bank. They have used the word term culture of the bank many times. Culture of the bank is this, culture of the bank is that, so on and so forth. The Senate committee or the group of people who are looking after the bank, okay, the Senate committee looking into the possible fraud, they were looking into a possible fraud, pointed the finger at the bank CEO, Chief Executive Officer John Stump. His name is John Stump and said, you are responsible for the culture of the bank. So this particular this particular committee, this particular Senate, they were looking into the various frauds that were happening in the in the bank, and they directly pointed out to the CEO, John Stump, and said that you are actually responsible for the culture of the bank. That Senate committee was using the term culture in a very specific, very specific ways. In their view, the constant pressure to sell bank accounts, loans, and other products created a climate of both fear and stress. But it also created a culture which is different from the climate. Okay, so culture is something that needs to be created, that needs to be developed. And who are the people who are responsible for all these things? Definitely the, the leaders of the organization those who are leading from the front. So if something wrong goes, it will be always it will be always pointed out to the leader that you are responsible for the culture of the school. So in case of school, so it is often the principal who is always pointed out if something goes wrong that you are responsible for bringing down the culture or creating such a culture within the school. So the culture can be good, the culture can be bad, it can be a climatic condition also where unnecessary things do happen. Okay, so this is the story. School culture, now let us come to school culture, okay. School culture can be defined as the beliefs, please note. Beliefs, perceptions, thinking, relationships, attitudes, and written and unwritten rules that shape and influence every aspect on how a school functions. It's as simple as that. School culture can be defined as the beliefs, the beliefs that the school has. And when you talk about the school, means the entire school, right from the uh, gate where the gate man stands, till to the highest level, maybe the principal and the director, are passing through all the parameters, all the uh, all the lanes and bylanes of the school, including teachers, vice principals, music teachers, librarians, everybody. Okay, so it is. It can be defined as the beliefs that the the perceptions, the thinkings, the relationship that one has with another, the relationship between the teacher and the student, the relationship between the parents and the school, the relationship between the the guard and the principal, the relationship between the men, the menials and the teachers and the students and so on and so forth. So that relationship, the attitudes, how we behave with each other. And, you know, in all schools, there are certain written and unwritten rules that shape and influence every aspect of the school function. Now, not many things cannot, not many things cannot be written, but they, they become rules. So that written and unwritten rules, they are also part of the functions of the school. Okay, culture of the school. The term also encompasses. The term also encompasses, the, that term, the culture, more concrete issues such as physical and emotional safety of the students. Yes, very, very, very important. Thank you, Priya Kumari, madam. Now she's giving me a thumbs up. Thank you so much. For a long time, you are giving me a thumbs down, ma'am. Okay. The term also encompasses more concrete issues such as physical and emotional safety of the students. Yes, physical and emotional safety is of the of paramount importance in a school and a good cultured school will definitely definitely take care of it safety of students and orderliness of classrooms how beautifully the classrooms are decorated you know whenever you we enter a school if we just see the main gate you know if you see the main gate the design of the main gate depicts volumes about the culture of the school the gate is well painted well made well decorated Okay, the get man is smart, huh? nice, well-dressed, polished. Huh? Whenever he sees somebody, welcomes. That shows the culture. And you feel like entering over there. And then there are also places where things are in absolute chaos. 
So orderliness of classrooms and public spaces and the degree to which school embraces and celebrates racial, ethnic, linguistic, and cultural diversities. Yes, how the school, to what extent the school is using the public places and the classrooms uh, where it embraces and celebrates a racial, ethnic, and linguistic cultural diversity, different types of children, different of different religion, different culture, coming from the different sections of the society, but all are joining together and depicting a unique culture of the school. This plays a very, very, very vital role in our day-to-day -day work inside the school, outside the school, everywhere, and that shows the culture of the school. And people flock to those schools. Their parents run towards those schools. They are ready to spend a few sleepless nights to stand in front of the main gate of those schools to get an admission form for their children. So make sure your school's culture remains the best in the area. What does the word culture mean to you and the word climate? Quickly, can you, can you quickly have, can you quickly have some answers? If the chat boxes are active, what elements of your own culture mean the most to you? Okay, respected teachers, quickly, can you have one or two answers? What elements of your own culture means the most to you? Let's see. Let's see what answers we are getting. Quickly, just for two or three minutes, we'll have this question answer session. Okay, because then it will it will give us an impetus to move forward. What elements of your own culture mean most to you, sir? Uh, can you have some answers? Can you have some rules and regulations? Fantastic. Kriti Kiran Zalo. I think the pronunciation, I am not very sure of it. She said that uh, discipline and something like that, she said. Can you have a few more answers? What elements of your own culture mean the most to you? Discipline, discipline, discipline. Yes, discipline is definitely, definitely one of the most important aspects of culture. Respect, Joy T. Sen said respect. Okay, Sankar Van said discipline. Many of you are going with discipline. Discipline, discipline, no, this is punctuality, wonderful. Eka. Mr. Eka says it's punctuality, moral values. Moral values, definitely, definitely. Respect for all, respect for all. Ethics, ethics, time management. Okay, okay, exactly, fine. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the answers. How is culture created? How do you create culture? Can you just tell? No, we don't, it's not rocket science. Don't think there is any, any wrong answer or right answer. You write, give your way. Well manners, okay. How you create your cultures? Do you create your cultures with discipline? You create your culture with well manners by sharing ideas. Wonderful concepts by sharing ideas. Beautiful. Uh, somebody say, Arakshan, respect to all. Definitely respect with the etiquette, etiquette, etiquette. I was looking for that particular word, etiquette. Skills, interactions with one another, wonderful. How do we establish a hierarchy of culture? Is one better than another just or it's just different? Can we get positive attitude? Can you, can you establish a hierarchy of culture? I'll, well, I'll read this question to you. Okay, accepting others' flaws. Wonderful. Accepting others' flaws is also part of the culture. Yes, we are about creative writing. Are baap re baap. Kya baat hai? Lot of answers we are getting. This shows that we are in the right direction. Cooperation. Okay. So can we create a hierarchy for all these things? Moral values. Well, see, uh, um, it all depends upon how you will take it. Whether you want to create a hier hierarchy for culture or you can just say, though, it's like a, it's like a link. What fits into Indian culture? Okay, all that whatever you have said are actually fits into Indian culture. Discipline, accepting others, ethics, attitudes, and so on and so forth. How do you define what is to be Indian? That is, a citizen or a resident of India in two continents, not in one country. Well, you know, we Indians have this unique quality. We may go to, we may, we may settle down in a different country. We may go to US, we may go to Europe, we may go to America, we may go to the, the Asian countries. But wherever we go, definitely we take up the likings of that country to give space to all. Fantastic. I agree with that. To give space, space to all. It is very, very, very important. Okay. 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 Now let's stop it. Okay. Now let's stop it. Again, we will have some discussions when we go forward. How do you define what is to be Indian? You know, a unique quality that we Indians have, you know, uh, when we go to a different continent or, or a different country, we, still, we definitely adopt some culture, but we never go move away from our own culture. You see, the Indians in the US, in, in Europe, in Asian countries, everywhere, they always keep the, that Indian tradition, that Indian culture always with them. They never ever move away from them. And, you know, 
when people from the foreign countries come and visit to us, maybe our relatives, we try to we try to become more of that country rather than of this country to so as if we know more about that country, which is also not a very good thing. We should not. So Indian culture, whenever we are there, we always have that feeling of Indian culture. Komal Kumari Madam says, yes, yes, ma'am, it's like that. Okay, let's move a little forward. See, a corporation, a bank, a business school, a school or a department can have uh, uh, can be said to have its own climate and culture. This tone, you know, this tone, the way we do the things is usually set by the leadership. So who creates the culture? The leadership creates the culture. Who creates the culture? The leadership. Openness. All the words that you use just now to define culture are, are, are most of them are over here. Openness. You said somebody said to give space. Openness, collaboration, honesty, directness, and engagement that are often the result of intentional strategies and actions created by the leader and the leadership team. Yes. So when we have these types of qualities of when we go with these parameters of to be openness, to be self-respect. Yes, self-respect is very important. Synergy is very important. Openness, collaboration, and honesty, directness, and engagements are of a result of intentional strategies. Purposely, the leaders go through these parameters to make sure that they create uh, the, the leader and the leadership team they create a culture which should be which should be blooming which should be blooming with positiveness on the other hand secrecy fear stress dishonesty and ineffectiveness are also usually set in motion by the leadership school leaders who are dishonest secretive discontent individualistic blaming others unsupportive these are the leaders leadership traits that promote dysfunction of various kinds but what to do it happens so there is two type of leadership one is definitely the positive leadership where the leader is always there to join hands with each and every member of the group to make sure that culture blooms and flourishes uh, left and right east and west of our organization at the same time we have many leaders which keep everything in secret. They don't want to let anybody know what is that. They want to, they purposely, they want to put the group in stress. They are dishonest. But they are ineffective in any type of, any type of work. And those school leaders who are dishonest, who are discontent, they are not satisfied. Incentives, yes, 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 incentives are there. Who are very discontent with their work and with the work of the people. Who are very individualistic. So some principals, some school leaders, you will always see, the pool is developing, growing, and it is growing and developing with the with the with the help of the principal, with the help of the teachers, teachers and others. But they will always say, no, 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 it was because of me that this thing has happened or that thing has happened. These individualistic people, and whenever something wrong goes, then they will blame the others. These unsupportive leadership people are the ones who are also responsible for creating a climate which is very, very unfathomable to to live and move on. So that is why it is very important that the school leadership will play a very vital role in maintaining the color in the culture of the school. Okay, let us let us move forward. School culture. What are the components? What are the components? What are the various parameters that should be there? That should be there in a school culture. Just about everything that goes on in schools, schools can be a part of the culture of the of the institution. So culture can also be part of the institution. Like what are the that like the facilities should be there. First and foremost thing is good, good facility should be there. Second, classroom decor. If the classroom is neat and clean and bright lights are lit over there with excellent information, that will show the culture of the school. I remember when I was, you uh, know, I always, uh, I always talk about my school. People, many of you uh, uh, will also say that Sir only talks about his school. The school where I am not working as a principal. I'm not talking about that school. Definitely, the school where I studied. In Asansul, St. Vincent's. You know, we had a unique culture within the school. The classrooms were every, almost every fortnight, the classrooms used to get decorated. And I still remember when I was in KG class, when I was in KG, see, years ago, I have forgotten when I was in KG, but still, few things are still very much clear in my mind. I used to see my class teacher, Mrs. Mac Reddy, every fortnight, she used to change the decor of the classroom. And she used to work day and night in order to bring her. What a dedicated teacher she was. And not only that, our other teachers also used to work hard to make sure the classrooms do. Because it is from the classroom that the children learn. Huh? So that decor of the classroom used to show the culture. Teacher professionalism. Now, teachers, are how do you define this? That will depend upon you. But teachers professionalism is if, when you talk about professionalism, what do we mean by that? 
in a simple way, I'm not going to any B, uh, B school, business school the definition of my professionalism in the simple language, which I understand because I'm not that much of a learned man with a lot of ideas. But I understand in a very simple way, when a person knows what to do, when to do and how to do his things, that is complete professionalism. Okay, so the teacher, the, how the, uh, the teacher's professionalism within the, within the, uh, yes, Preeti Choudhury said yes. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Hallway displays, you know, the corridors, the school corridors, the way we display them. Teacher interaction with the students. When the teachers are talking with the students with quality language, quality words, taking care of each and every child, that shows the culture of the school, you know. Teacher interaction with each other, how the teachers interact with each other, that also shows the culture of the school. Teachers cannot be jealous of each other. Each one in the world is earning and living by his own ways and means. I cannot say uh, that, okay, Madam X earns more than me, so uh, I will not talk to her or I will not go to her. She doesn't deserve this. Usko to mil, pata nahi, maybe she has a fixation with the, uh, she has some sort of fixation with the principal. That's why he's getting, she's getting more salary. I'm not getting. Uh, so all sorts of these types of interactions should not be there. There should be always healthy, good interaction, both with students and teachers. Teacher interaction with the administration. Teachers interaction with the administration, yes. That the way the teacher talks to the principal or the way the principal talks to the teacher, that also shows the culture of the of the school. Many schools I have seen and I'm, I'm not scared of telling this. Some principals don't behave with the teachers properly. If that thing is happening somewhere, it needs to be removed immediately and for once and for all. In the name of administration, in the name of administration, Communication should be polite. Yes, definitely. Interaction of the administration and the teacher, teacher and the administration should always be polite. Learned people, cultured people, intellectual people, they don't shout in the schools. They, whatever they have to do, they do it in a very, very diplomatic way. And that's the most important thing. And that's what we need. So some of the components are this. Good facilities should be available. Classrooms should be decorated well. Teachers should have true professionalism within themselves. Teacher interaction with students should be polite, absolutely heart touching. It should be heart touching, you know. We just cannot scold the students whenever we feel like. If they ask something, we just cannot go out and say, hey, come on, you don't know this. No need of knowing this. No need of knowing that. No, 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 not at all. Effective communication should be there. Innovative classrooms should be there. Yes, definitely. Teacher interaction should, with each other should be well. There should not be any form of dirty politics within the school within the staff room, each one trying to pull the leg of other. Otherwise, I, I know it is it is a distant dream to get something like that. But it happens, respected teachers, I'll tell you, it happens. Okay, you will get it. Teacher interaction with administration, there should be. Until and unless, you know, that camera tray is not created, until and unless that camera tray is not created within the school, the culture will not develop. Schools may grow, schools may earn money, children may come. But you know, somewhere down the line, wo jo dil ka ek thadakan hota hai na, jo thadakta hai, or favoritism, yes, there is something that is very wrong. Wo, wo dil ka thadakna sahi thang se wo thadakna chahi. I will, I always say the heart must throb. It should not beat. It should throb. When the throbbing of the heart definitely creates memorable thinkings within your own self. Yes, respected teachers. Okay, let's move forward. School culture, we'll, do, uh, we'll move a little forward. Uh, we'll still go to teacher preparedness. If the teachers are well prepared with their subject, if they are well versed with their knowledge and ideas, and when they will, when they will share this, you know, wonders will take place within the classroom. That is also part of the culture. That is also a part of the culture of the school. Instructional, instructional programs that we give. How dedicated we are. How, how beautiful we make them. Somebody just now wrote innovations. Yes, how innovative we are with our instructional programs also speaks about the culture. And this is what we need. It is the need of the art. Expectations from parents, students. As parents have expectations, so do teachers also have expectations from students so students involvement is also important but who will involve the students in each and every aspect of learning the teacher who will be there the teacher 
the the mentor the guide the the mentors thank you sarita ma'am the mentor the guide the facilitator of education present inside the classroom will create an atmosphere from where they can expect great things from the students and of course parents interactions are also needed that's why we have ptms where we can talk and with the student accountability levels we all should be responsible to a certain extent within the schools if we are accountable to whatever we do whatever we say that also depicts the culture and if we try to become escapists if we try to make others as scrap coats five brand environment definitely arch sinas sir five brand environment so rituals and celebrations should be that there. there should be a diversity giving respect to each and every every strata of society within the school because school itself is a society na meetings and structure should be done and absence rates and power and less the less we are absent so the absence rates over there i will tell you you know if the school has a vibrant culture which just somebody just now wrote huh, about vibrant culture. if a school have a vibrant culture if there is lot of spectrum of physics and if we have a vibrant culture within the school if that environment of happiness a culture of feeling for each other is created i can guarantee you respect the teacher neither the students will be absent in school nor the teachers will be absent in school you will just count the hours when to reach the school and, and you will count you will not count hours when to leave the school it's a fact yes knowledge and all these things are very important and definitely punctuality is important we have to be very very punctual with our work so these are the components of school culture if we practice them if we follow them definitely we are bound to get it. now we will study something about climate this is also often said you know what is the culture culture wise versus climate if adults don't determine culture and climate the students certainly will it's a it's a unique quotation by someone an anonymous person okay it's a unique quotation by an anonymous educationalist he said that if adults don't determine culture and climate the students will definitely do it it's very very true thank you sir thank you so much sir virender sir the climate climate consist of what it consist of the attitude the behavior the, the mood how the mood swing is there in the school the moral whether the more weather report the normal weather report can be affected by events out of school control the climate can get affected out of uh, for events out of school control climate can be affected temporarily day by day now when you talk about climate okay they may be of short duration but maybe the attitude of the teachers are not very good principal is highly moody or the mood of the entire school itself is not good moral values are not that way made so we said the climate is not good weather report weather report weather over here means what is happening within the school this can affect the event that can be affected by events out of school because sometimes there are certain things which are not within the school's control a mob gathering over there creating some problem and all that also talks about the climate climate can be affected temporarily day by day but what is culture culture determines the climate now see now look at this contrasting part okay please look at this one culture determines the climate if good culture is there if unique culture is there if superb culture is there climate will automatically change people will go in the right attitude moral values will be much better than that okay the school can easily control school will not let anything happen within the school premises which are not within the school's control culture is the personality of the school attitude changes more easily than personality yes so culture is what it is the personality of the school it is it, it's like an institute we talk about institution no that's the, it's the institution by its own self culture creates negatives and positives definitely but the most positive the good culture is the culture dictates feelings hum abhi hum baat kar rahe the na to dil ko dil ka dhadakna andar ka ek feeling hota hai na no audio am i am i audible am i audible to all of you please let me know because somebody just now wrote that i am not audible yeah rakesh kumar sir said yeah okay yes sir thank you sir thank you rakesh sir thank you okay thank you so much thank you so much so uh, not able to listen why sir am i too fast okay you can hear me okay then i i think you have to you have to check your device okay if the sound is not coming culture creates negative positive values culture dictates feelings apne aap mein andar mein ek ajeeb kisam if you are living in a good culture wo apne aap mein ek ajeeb kisam ka feeling layega jisko matlab aap na aap har dam sochenge nahi yahi acha yahi kaam humne kar humko humko karna chahiye sorry i am not very good in hindi you know 
By the way, I'll just, I will just take one minute since we are discussing about culture. I'll just take one minute of yours. I'll just go a little bit out of the topic. If you permit, if you all permit, I'll just take one half a minute. If you permit, if I'll go out of the topic. Can I, can I, can I with your permission? Can I go? Just half a minute out of the topic because we are talking about dictating uh, feelings and all. ओके मनीष मनोज सर सचिन अच्छा ना सो हम हम तो बोल रहे थे ना कि हमारा हिंदी तो बड़ा अजीब किस्म का हिंदी है ना वो थोड़ा बंगाली बंगाली मिक्स है बंगाली का हिंदी अच्छा आप लोगों ने कि दो बिहारी को हिंदी बोलते हैं बंगला बोलते हुए सुने हैं हाँ लेट मी हाँ इन्हीं आ गए हैं हम लोग बंगाली तो ऐसे � अब पता नहीं आप सुने हैं कि नहीं लेकिन हट ओके but you know it's fantastic if you hear to Bihari speaking Bengali I'll tell you respected teachers you will fall in love with the language also recently and I not I'll not say recently just a a few months ago you know in my in my place Asansol where I'm originally belonging to our MP is Mr. Satrugan Sinha uh, he is known as Bihari Babu, very famous for that. I am just taking two minutes. Okay, don't mind it. Kabi kabi chode chode stories na both kuch hamko sikla de culture ke bani. And he was having he was having a discussion. He was having a discussion with another very famous man from Bihari, Joita Sen. Bolun sir, bolchi madam. So he was having a discussion with another very famous journalist of Bihar, Mr. Alok Kumar, and they were discussing in this way. So, Mr. Uh, during the before the elections were there, okay. So, Mr. Satrugan Sinha was in Asansol uh, for campaigning for the for his party for the post of the M MP, and this Mr. Uh, Mr. Alok Kumar was talking with him in this way. Dada, Namaskar, Kimon Achen, Satrugan Sinha, Dada. Okay. So uh, then uh, Satrugan Sinha ji said. ए अलोक दादा अपना के एक तामी कुथा बोले दीची एक कुथा टा अपनी भालो करे सुने नींद देखो अमार नाम जितो सत्तर गनुसिना ना होए अमार नाम होच्छे शत्रु गनुसिना अमार नाम होच्छे बंगला ते इटा के बोले शत्रु गनुसिना अपने वक्त सुते घन घन करे देवन्ना तले में छन छन करे जावो ओके सो दिस इज वेरी यूनिक यू so that's a, no, you know the way you the way you make situations easy the way you you discuss with situations often talks about the culture so these two men from bihar talking about another language of their neighboring state is something wonderful ah daro thank you thank you okay so this was the this was the discussion you know such a such a beautiful discussion they were having Thank you, Susmita Mandal said, Allah will chan, sir. But somebody is saying, thumbs down. Okay. Okay, let's move forward. Okay. Culture is about values, beliefs, missions, and visions. That also we discuss. Cultures are, uh, culture is about values, beliefs, missions, and visions. We have values in life. We all believe something that this should happen in this way. That should happen. And definitely missions and visions are always there. We have, we teachers always have vision. Kichu sunte pachanna. Somebody is saying, I written in Bengali email. Uh, I'm trying to be much more, much more uh, audible. But then, uh, you know, you have to check your device. Culture consists of underlying norms, values, and beliefs that teachers and administrators hold about teaching and learning. So culture consists of what? Underlying it, uh, certain norms are there, they need to be followed. Certain values are there, they, they need to be taken into consideration. The beliefs have to be taken, taken that teachers, teachers and administrators hold about teaching and learning. So in the process of teaching and learning, our culture will consist of Values, beliefs, visions, feelings, visions, all taken together, then only we will be able, then only we will be able to depict a good culture. Saima, madam, I think you have to see your uh, device because many teachers are telling that they are, I am audible to them. Assessing culture, how you will assess whether something is, uh, there is culture or not? How will you assess that? Now, there's a toxic culture and there's a positive culture. The cultures have the following aspect, lack of purpose when there is no purpose for anything. You are joking, sir. I am joking, madam. Yes, sometimes I do choke. That is also important. That is also important. Uh, otherwise, life will become very monotonous. Cultures have the following aspect, lack of purposes, norms, reinforce, inertia, or negativity. Adults blame students 
Yes, that is toxic culture. When the teachers blame everything towards the student, collaboration has discouraged students, doesn't want to collaborate with one or make difficult hostile among staff, gossip substitute for information and communication. All these things, all these things will make a toxic culture. So teachers blaming the students or the adults blaming the students for not happening, certain things not happening in the class. Collaboration is discouraged. One teacher is not ready to help. One teacher is not read, ready to help another teacher. That is also a toxic culture. There is always some sort of a hostility among staff. Each one is talking negative about others. Okay. What she knows, I know much better than her. What he knows, he is uh, this, that, that. So this is not good culture, you know. And positive culture exhibits the following aspects. Success is celebrated routinely at all levels. Yes. If success is there, we, the word we, we use. We are successful. Genuine adult trust is nurtured. People just trust each other. Communication is regular and frequent. Effective communication takes place. Fairness in all interactions. There is no hide and seek game. Everything is transparent. Rules are evident in public. Adults learn so that they could model others. Character and moral development priorities are given. The top priorities, they are of paramount importance. Then only we can assess the culture. So if the culture is not, if the culture is with a lot of negativities, if a lot of negativities are happening, then it is toxic. But if a lot of positives are happening, if there is... Well, understanding if all everybody is well, well linked with one another within the system, then it is bound to have a positive culture. Okay. How do we assess culture and climate? How do we assess them? Now, this is okay. These are the studies that are not going through all because they are a lot of hi-fi studies are there. Right now, it is in one hour. It is not possible. But one thing I will tell, research tells us that, that there are fundamental aspects of culture that predict improvement. A uh, 204 British study of 134 secondary schools reported that successful schools have a demanding culture. Those schools which are successful, they have a demanding culture. Hunger for improvement. Yes, there is always a hunger for improvement and they are always promoting excellence, holding out hope for every child. So when the school thinks in this way, then definitely the school is bound to be successful. There is always a hunger for culture. They demand culture. They demand improvement. Promote excellence. Okay, a study of Chicago public schools showed that relation trust is high in successful relation, re, uh, relational trust is high in successful schools. So, yes, that is also a part of the culture. You know, relationship, trust with each another is a, is a part of that culture. And if this plays a very, very important role in making schools successful. The good relationship between teacher and student, teacher and teacher, teacher and administration, teacher and parents. <laughs> The conditions for building school culture create high measures for success that go beyond test scores. Don't only, don't, in the beginning I told you, if you can recollect, that the parents, the first thing that the parents look is whether the school has a good culture or not. Whether the school has a good culture. Test score, results, they are important. But first, what is the atmosphere of the school? Ensure that everyone has a clear and comprehensive understanding of what school culture actually is. If you have a school, if you have a culture, the leadership should play a very great role, big role over here to make sure that each and every aspect of schools understanding the culture is very clear. It is comprehensive, easy to understand, and the idea is very clear. Nobody should, nobody should be uh, coping here and there to find out what exactly is there. In many schools, it happens. So that's so what that that the the ideas are not clearly distributed. That needs to be done. And who will do that? Obviously the school leadership and of course everybody associated with it, the teachers and all. Provide the right tools. Yes, Asha. Good evening. I am actually doing a session. Okay. Uh, session for Patna. Online session. Online. Let me finish it off. Uh, after 20 minutes. Okay. Ensure that everyone has a clear and comprehensive understanding. That is very important. Provide the right tools for assessing the culture and climate. What gets measured and what we value. That should be given. And those ideas should be very clearly right. What are the necessary tools? How we talk, how we'll behave, what are the things we need to do? Develop indicators of school quality and success. Yes, indicators. Uh, like we prepare rubrics now. 
nowadays we are preparing a lot of rubrics in assessing the how the how the students are doing the class. That same way, there should be indicators, there should be rubrics that this this should be of this level, that should be of that level. Then only we can we can discuss about success and quality. Explore the research around school culture. What works, what doesn't. Yes. See the, this uh, trial and error method of of comprehending culture should be within the school campuses. Some things, some features may work, some may not work. Those which will not work, we will understand that they are not good for us. So let us abandon them. And those which will work, definitely will go forward. If school creates touchstones, you know, have you heard of touchstones? Example, uh, we pursue excellence in school uh, scholarship and behavior. Touchstone means that, that the special ideas that you have within the schools, they have to be touched and reinforced daily. We talk about touchstone. That's going to mean something that is very valuable for the school that you want to achieve. So we pursue excellence in scholarships and behavior. So we need to reinforce this daily. If not, the result is either sectipism or cynicism or both. So if we have certain touchstones and if we, if we live by them, if we breathe by them, if we think by them, then we need to, we need to reinforce them daily. We need to go through them daily. Then only those touchstones will be available to us. Otherwise, they will fade away and they will not remain touchstones, but they will remain heavy stones. Culture begins and ends with kids. It's true. And within the framework of every human being, there are ideas of many human beings. And that is why they said that culture begins and ends with kids. Culture begins and ends with kids. Yes, our children teach us. Our children shows us also. When we are talking about school, okay. Students are safe physically, emotionally. They are safe physically and emotionally. Treated fairly and with equity through uh, taught to avoid the risk. Okay, with equity and taught to avoid risk. So students are safe if they are shaped, they are emotionally, physically, they should be treated fairly. Okay. So that is why they will go. So culture begins and ends with kids. We have to think about the kids always. Students are supported. Meaningful connections to adults, strong bonds should be there. A good, good, positive peer relationship. Yes. One child should have a good relationship with other child. There should not be any type of, any type of uh, negative impressions with each other. Then it will not work. Nowadays, children are on, on small, small matters. Children fight in the school and they fight so violently that sometimes we get scared. Even blood also comes out when they fight with each other. So that needs to be taken very clearly. In a good cultured school, it doesn't happen. In, in a good cultured school, it doesn't happen in that. Students are challenged. High expectations, strong personal motivations, life goals are, are prominent, strong and diverse academic opportunities. When they are available, when they are set, their culture will develop. They will show us. Students are socially capable, emotionally intelligent, culturally very competent. You know, they're culturally very competent. They, they know they, they know how to respect each other's culture, how to respect each other's tradition, religion, the status of that. We all teach them in the schools. That's why that, that, that division of feeling is not there. This addresses the social, physical, and intellectual environments of the school. Each one demands adult contributions and effective engagement to us. Now see, we want to make the students safe. We are to support the student. We are. We want the students to be high. Uh, we expect high expectations from this. But in this, in all, in all these cases, you know, our our attention is needed. So, the, these address the social, physical, inter, intellectual environments of the school will demand will come when the adults will be helping them. When adult contribution comes, otherwise it will not happen. Fair isn't everyone getting the same. Sometimes we talk about it. Fair it doesn't mean that everyone getting the same. Fair is everyone getting what they need to be successful. What they need to be successful, they should get this. Then only it is clear. Okay, I'll read it once again. Fair isn't everyone getting the same. No, sometimes we say no, but fear is everyone getting what they need to be successful in order to be successful. Not only say that something that they need and that will make them become successful also. Okay. The right question, some of the questions. Is school a welcoming place for everyone? How many of you say yes? Is school a welcoming place for everyone? Oh, yes. Theory, sir, says yes. AK theory, right? It says yes. What are the behavioral, behavioral expectations and how are they made tangible and unpractical? Okay, sometimes, okay, sometimes, you know, uh, a lot of questions are there. You can answer them later also. How does the school leadership communicate, uh, communicate expectation? How does the school, in a very effective way, if the school leadership communicates, then expectations are bound to come. Okay. Uh, do adults model what they ask for in others? Do adult, uh, uh, adults model what they, okay, yes. It is said, no, definitely. The teacher should practice that which they preach. If I expect, 
good things from my students, I should I should myself do that. In diversity, obvious and obviously valued. Is diversity obvious and obviously valued? Yes, we do value them. Is empathy a taught skill? Can empathy be taught? Initially, it can be taught. Later, automatically, it happens with the children. Yes. What is disciplinary structure and what support what support ensure that it works? See, disciplinary structure is a set of rules and regulations. If they are followed regularly, telling the children exactly what will be the results if we follow them, then it will work. Otherwise, it will not. How are resources allocated? How are school priorities decided upon the upon and around? How are resources allocated? Resources are allocated depending upon how you try to distribute them. What are your intentions? What is your vision? What is your mission? If those things are very clear, then you can easily uh, allocate the resources to make sure that the mission and the vision both are accomplished. Okay. How are the race, gender, class message sent by the school? Okay, how are race, gender, class message sent by the school? Okay, we always talk about diversity. We always talk about inclusive education. And through this, we can give this information. What are the answers? How do parents fit into the school culture? Parents play a very, very vital role in the school culture. Their attitude, their behavior, and their take on the school. Their take, T-A-K-E, take. Their take on the school to create a school culture. And they also themselves involved in this way in their school culture. These are some of the things that we can do. Okay, the right. Does the school library have a good collection that reflects diversity? Yes, definitely. The right questions are there. So we have to keep this. These questions are very important. How does the overall decor and the state of the of the, uh, of the facility tell you? Okay, if the school is well decorated, well maintained, definitely it speaks volumes about the culture. Are the hallways decorated? Definitely, I think I, I in my lifetime so far, I have visited more than 150 schools across the country. And wherever I have gone, I have seen unique culture. So my, my last visit was a school in Assam, a little bit outskirts of Assam, Brahmaputra Valley School, where I went there for a one-day training program. Believe me, respected teachers, what a wonderful view, beautiful and cute school it is. It shows volumes about the culture of the school. Can parents volunteer? Definitely. Definitely. Even the NEP is telling that that uh, the community should be involved. So parents should volunteer in, in culture development. Is there a dress code uniform for students for adults? Definitely there should be. That speaks about culture. What are the school rituals and celebrations? Each school has their own ways of rituals and celebrations that they can perform and to make sure the culture is flourished. Where is the character education program? Where is the character? In the school itself. Is it tangible? Definitely tangible. Who runs it? We teachers runs it along with the help of the parents. And there is no problem in that part also. School culture sample survey. This I'm not doing. You can do it. Professional collaboration. Teachers discuss instructional strategies and design them. They make them. Teachers and leaders develop school schedules. Okay. Teachers and staff can involve themselves in general decision making. You can take. You can. You can, uh, you can take a screenshot of this. Teachers and uh, stands. Uh, staff tell effective and positive stories about the school to the student. Never be a negative story. Many, many, many teachers have this. The way of talking about negatives within the school. Are school ka ye nahi hai, school ka wo nahi hai. Are nahi hai to baba aap banaiye na. Ye bhi ek problem hai. Many teachers are there. Are school ka ye nahi hai, pata hai wo nahi hai. Sir ye nahi tha. Are nahi tha to aap kyun nahi banaiye? Bana dijiye na, aap idea dijiye na. Wo nahi karenge, lekin bolte rahenge. These are the things that I, I hate like anything. School members value each other. Everybody, we should value each other. We should take care of everything. And the culture that and the rituals should be celebrated. Okay. Uh, before we before we go to the next one, I just want one, I ask you one question. Respected teachers who are present over here. Suppose you are working in the school and your principal says that in the on the Diwali day and on the holy day, holy, H-O-L, holy Diwali, Christmas, Eid, these days I will give you triple salary. Will you work in the school that day? A very important question. The principal of the school says that on Diwali, Holy, Eid, and Christmas days, there will be school and triple salary will be given. Will you attend school? No, 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 sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir, no, sir. Yes, no, sir. Because, you know, these are the celebrations which children should also celebrate in their house and we also do it to make sure that we value our traditions and rituals. Otherwise, children will never learn what is Holi and what is Diwali and what is Eid and what is Christmas. It's very important to keep the school closed on that. Of course, we'll have a 
three-day function on it, but and on the very day that that feeling of that that culture should be there. It's very important. It's very 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 important that uh, we celebrate this uh, this uh, these uh, celebrations within our uh, house as well as in the school. So some of the ways by which we can make a very good culture within the school over here, culture and climate remain the norms, values, and rituals are climate and are all manifestations. They can change time to time. Okay, uh, state and local policies, school organizations, and students they all uh, they are all uh, a part of the culture and all. Testimony from learning. I'm not going to all those details. A lot of things needs to be discussed. But remember one thing: climate is of short duration, culture is of long duration. That we need to maintain. Assessing effectiveness. How will you assess the effectiveness? Focus on your goals. Make them come true. Adequacy and communication should be perfect. Focus on them. Use the resources properly. The power should be equally distributed. It's not that every one person should hold the power and that should be given. Sense of identity should be there. Teachers should have their identity. Students should have and our automatically school will have. There should be some sort of autonomy given to everyone. Problem solving abilities should be present with them. And everything should be equally divided. How management speaks to staff is important. How staff speaks to management is also important. How staff speak about management in their absence is important. In the presence of in the in the presence of the principal, the teacher says, ah, sir, is very good. Once principal is out, so that should not be there. So that can only happen if the principal himself in this, if the school leadership is in the right place, and we all are like that. We all honest feedback should always be given. School response to students should always be taken very seriously. Culture is the result. So what finally what we can get from it is culture is the result of messages that are received about what is really valued. Yes, the message that we receive is what is really valued. People align their behavior to these messages. They just see whether they are up to those messages or not in order to fit in them. Changing culture requires a systematic and planned changes to these messages whose sources are behavior symbols and system. So what happens, you know, Culture also changes with the passage of time. Culture changes because people's way of thinking and everything also changes. But they should also people should also respond to them in a proper way. The challenge of culture is like that. Situations that symbolize the problem the culture. What are the situations? A lot of we are thinking again. We are teachers and staff are routinely on leave. That is a very bad culture of the school. Office staff do not make visitors feel welcome. Yes, another thing. Visitors, office staff always are those who have a bad mouth. They are not. Leaders are not visible. At least leaders should be visible. If the leaders are not visible, the culture of the school is not good. Of course, I myself is also not visible uh, uh, sometimes in the school because I have to go out for training programs. But I make sure that I not not only me, all the principal they make sure that out of 26 working days in the in the school, at least 20 days the school principal should be present in the school. Okay, otherwise it's it's a bad culture. Curriculum uh, is hit or miss. That should be planning should be done, and it should not be considered as a as a burden. Classroom should have sufficient student meetings should meetings should not start late often the same time. Okay, professional attire not valued. If it is not valued, it's not good. If there is a school dress, it should be taken care of very and rules not enforced. Rules should be followed. This cannot be enforced. If forcing means it's not good. Culture, climate, or something. Okay, students they uh, they threaten teacher. It's a climate of the school. These are some of the questions that we don't have more time. Otherwise, I would have discussed with you. But remember. Some of the things people, parents, cooperation should be, it's not, if not, it's their homework is not given, homework is not really checked with. It's a bad culture. This person is not having a very good culture. What is the culture of race in the United States that we are not bothered about this? The best teachers and the educators, they know the content. The best teachers and the educators are the are the very important people who are, who actually dictate the culture of the school. So they know the content, they good build good relationship, develop their knowledge, all the good qualities that are there should be the teacher are professional enough. They attend, they are they are attentive, they are punctual, they dress for the job, they are collegial, they avoid toxicity. If we have, the, I know it is very difficult to get all these things, but again we can get it if we want. Okay. How will you contribute to an effective school culture? You can write down by yourself and you can think and you can present it to your school principal. They may help you out. What do you think you will need to focus in order to develop and live up to the best least? That also you can do. This is some sort of a homework. We'll see, I, we will see a short video, a three to four minute video on school culture. Please, I think many of you have seen this video. Again, you see it. The more you will see it, 
the mood you will fall in love with this so let us see the video and let me know whether you can hear the sound Sound is not coming. How many of you uh, is the is is there no sound in the video? But I think it is sound is given. Madam, I am in a session right now. I'll talk to you after something. Okay, so uh, so that was, uh, I think uh, many of you could not get the sound. Uh, I don't know what was the wrong with the video, but uh, everything was, was perfect over here. Uh, so that is school culture. That, that video, you know, it shows that, uh, I'll just give you in brief. It was actually a teacher who was there for a long period of time and she has planted, uh, when she first joined the school at that time, the first batch of her students, they planted trees and the trees have grown. Then this little girl comes to know about it and she calls all her old student, all the old students, and they make the uh, retirement day a beautiful day. So that is also a culture of the school. How the students they interact with their teachers. That is also culture. So let us all promise today that we will make a very cultured school. The school where there will be freedom, there will be acceptability, there should be good communication, there should not be any type of hindrance among teachers, there should not be ill feeling, bad feeling with teachers. 
And because at the end of the day, we are dealing everything for the children. We are doing everything for the children. With this, we come to the end of this session, respected teachers on school culture. Thank you very much, respected teachers, to be with me for this one and a half hour or so. Uh, if you want to add up something for the for betterment of this particular training program for others, then you are most welcome to give your opinions. You can write to me. My email ID is there, jitsen.sen1 at the rate gmail.com. You can also call me. Till 8.30, I take phone calls, 825-003-0091. Okay, wonderful to be associated with you and all those answers that you people are giving, the way you are reacting and interacting speaks, again, quality of your way of taking to the teaching the world. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, now, uh, I will stop sharing the video. Uh, if you want to uh, write down anything, you can, and we'll have some, if, if there is any questions, please, you can ask me. If uh, I'll try my best to, have, uh, to answer them, I'll try my best to answer them. If any questions are there, if any questions are there, I'll try to answer them, respected teachers. Uh, and 2,065 attendants, wonderful, wonderful. You know, one needs to be lucky enough to be associated with so many learned people in one platform. It, it doesn't just happen like that. One needs to be lucky enough. And I think in this case, I am quite lucky to be associated with such great and learned people like you all. If anybody has any question, they are most welcome to write. Thank you, Deepika Madam. Deepika Gupta Madam, thank you so much for that uh, beautiful message from, from you. Thank you, Ajay sir. Thank you very much.